Welcome to the Contra Costa College instructional video series. I'm Professor Nick Rothman, and today I'll be describing how to use the Airlift Coolant Service Tool. First, I will give an overview of why knowing how to use this tool is important. Next, we will briefly cover the theory of how the tool works. Finally, we will demonstrate step-by-step -step how to use the tool. A basic coolant service was quick and easy on older vehicles. Basically, the old antifreeze is drained from the bottom of the radiator, then the new antifreeze is poured into the top of the radiator. So why are there so many new coolant service tools on the market? Many newer vehicles have a complex cooling system. Minivans and large SUVs, for example, use a radiator in the front, a heater core under the dash, and a second heater core in the rear of the vehicle. This newer type of cooling system can have long stretches of coolant hose, multiple electric valves, and more than one heater core. Draining the cooling system remains simple. Just open the drain at the bottom of the radiator. Refilling the cooling system is where things get complicated. Because the top of the radiator may not be the highest point in the cooling system, simply pouring coolant into the top of the radiator will trap air bubbles in the lines that rise above the top of the radiator. This condition is called air lock. A vehicle with an air locked cooling system can overheat days after the cooling system service was performed, causing serious damage to the engine. The airlift and other cooling system vacuum tools refill the cooling system completely without air pockets even if the cooling system has high areas above the radiator or multiple electronic valves. The airlift and other similar tools create a vacuum in the cooling system. Once all the air is removed, the system is refilled with coolant. The vacuum will draw coolant into the lines and other components completely filling the cooling system. Now the service is complete. The system is filled with new coolant and there are no air pockets in the system. Okay, let's see what it's like using the airlift on this vehicle. First, I will lift the car and drain the coolant. Now that the coolant is finished draining, I will prepare the airlift. The parts of the airlift are the refill hose with screen, refill valve, vacuum gauge, vacuum button, and cone adapter. First, connect an airline to the airlift. Insert the filler tube into a container of coolant. Prime the filler tube by pressing the vacuum button with the filler valve open while blocking the hole at the bottom of the adapter cone. Make sure the refill hose is completely full with no large bubbles. From this point forward, the refill hose must remain in the coolant container. Make sure there is more than enough coolant in the container to completely refill the system. Push the adapter cone into the top of the radiator. Be careful not to press too hard because the plastic radiator is fragile. Press and hold the vacuum button until the vacuum gauge reads 25 or higher. The coolant hoses may start to collapse. This is because of the vacuum. Once the vacuum has reached or passed 25 on the gauge, release the button. The vacuum should remain at the same number for 30 seconds or more. If the vacuum steadily drops, there is a leak in the system. On some vehicles, the rubber hose that leads to the overflow tank must be pinched off for the vacuum gauge to stay at or above 25. If the vacuum remains at or above 25 during the leak test, open the filler valve. Coolant will flow into the system, completely filling the cooling system. Don't forget to fill the overflow bottle.
Replace the radiator cap and the coolant service is done. That's the end of this episode. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it fun and informative. Please feel free to check out the other videos in the Contra Costa College Automotive Technology Instructional Video Series.